Sports. We are Black Hawk. We are LA. As of right now, Mike Trout's going to be playing in Anaheim. Got the call last night from Tony, and uh, I can't even really explain it, you know. I almost, I almost was in tears hearing that, you know, getting an opportunity like this to come up here and play for the big club, and uh, I'm going to have fun with it, definitely. some big news that broke last night. The Angels making the announcement. Mike Trout getting called up from Double A, Arkansas, working out before the game. He was the first guy in the cage in group number one. There I am, right behind the cage, just checking things out. It was unbelievable to watch. Everyone is excited. Penciled in the lineup in his first game in the big leagues. It occurs tonight in game two of the series against the Seattle Mariners. Hi, everybody. From inside the Big A, Victor Rojas along with Mark Gubiza. We welcome you back to Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West. We're going to talk about Mike Trout, obviously, because he is the prodigy. Everyone has been expecting him to come to the big leagues at some point, whether it's September this year or at some point in 2012. But because Peter Borges strained the upper portion of his right hamstring last night, the Angels needed an outfielder, and they decided to go down to the minor leagues and big up one of the best prospects in baseball. Victor, he can do it all. He's great defensively. He covers a lot of ground. He's got a very good arm. But what he does with the bat, the number one prospect in all of baseball, MLB Network, and, of course, MLB.com said this kid is a sure fire superstar at the major league level. His numbers in the minor leagues, you know, 12 doubles, 11 triples, 9 home runs, stolen bases, hits for an average, walks. He does everything well. And of course, he has that mentality that he's not going to be afraid coming up here at the big league level. Even at the age of 19, he has that type of ability. And I expect big things out of him, of course, and so does the club. Well, Peter Borges is still on the roster. Tyler Chapman was optioned down to AAA Salt Lake. He'll be making a start next Thursday and kind of get him in line for that series against the Texas Rangers after the All-Star break here at the Big A. Tonight, here at the Big A, it is Irvin Santana towing the slam for the Angels, going up against a very young man. Man, making his second major league start, that is Blake Bevin of the Seattle Mariner. Just about ready for baseball, so sit back and relax. We've got lineups at first pitch when we return.
Hyundai. People are talking about Hyundai. Uncensored. See what they're saying at MySoCalHyundai.com. And by CarMax. Now more than ever, the smart choice is CarMax. It is Flashback Friday here at the Big A. And with the uniforms comes, uh, how about flash forward into the future? Mike Trout, the future outfielder of the Angels, making his Major League debut here. Game two of this four-game series against the Seattle Mariners. The Halos last night. Victoria is picking up game one by the final of 5-1. to one. Jared Weaver, his fourth complete game of the season, and he is now 11 and. Four. Let's take a look at Eric Wedge's lineup for the Seattle Mariners. They're in third place in the West, four and a half games back in the Texas Rangers at 43 and 45. They have each real leading things off in the right field. Brennan Ryan is the shortstop. Dustin Ackley moves up to the three hole. He's playing second base. Miguel Olivo is the cleanup hitter tonight doing the catching. Justin Smoke, who was a DH last night, is at first base. Jack Cuss will take over those DH duties. Franklin Gutierrez is in center field. Kyle Seeger is the third baseman. Made his major league debut last night and went hitless. And Greg Holman of the Netherlands will bat ninth and play left field. Taking on Urban Santana, 4-8 and eight, and a 3.89 ERA. And Gooby, it seems like the last couple of starts seems to be getting closer and closer to what he was doing last year. Yeah, that feel for that slider has been outstanding. Getting on top of that pitch, late break to it, his fastball velocity in general. 93 to 95, his changeup, he's mixing in his curveball. He's been pitching very well, 9-4 in his career against the ends with the area 3-8-3. Lost a tough one earlier in the season when he went 6-2 and thirds, just gave up two earned runs, no walk, uh, seven strikeouts with three walks. So look for him to stay in the zone and finish off with the breaking ball. Take a look at the defense behind Urban Santana. Vernon Wells in left. Mike Trout in center. Torrey Hunter is in right. Alberto Callasco, Eric Ibar on the left side of the infield. Howie Kendrick and Mark Trumbull on the right side. And the switch hitter, Hank Conger, behind the plate. And Mike Trout playing that center field position. It's good to have two gold glovers on each side of you. But again, Mike Soch is going to want him to be the quarterback of the defense. Always a difficult test when you're a youngster this way. But he has that kind of focus and mentality that he will be the general of that defense in center field. Urban with 118 innings of work, trying to kind of duplicate, if you will, the outing that he had in Seattle. One and only meeting against the Manders, even though he took the loss, pitched very well through the first six innings. And he gave up a couple of runs in the seventh in that mid-June start. And the key for Urban is getting this man right out. Ichiro's had a lot of success against him, 364 in his career against Irvin Santana, the big thing, too, he can steal some bases, so keep him off as much as possible. Each row last night went 0 for 3 as he takes ball one outside. Hitting 271 on the year with a home run, 22 runs batted in. Swing and a miss. And it's one ball, one strike. Good fastball there from Irvin Santana on the inside part of the plate. Breaking pitch, grounded softly towards short. Ibar gets rid of it quickly, and each row's retired for the first down. We'll quickly get to our Hyundai key to the game. A little Ozzy Osbourne for you tonight, Victor. Shot in the dark. The Angels given that opportunity to Mike Trout to be the center fielder for at least the next few games here before the All-Star break, showing that talent. Hopefully it will show that he's good enough to be able to stay here and have the opportunity to be able to bring this team to the title once again. Mike Trout familiar with this field. Played in the MLB Futures game last season right here prior to the All-Star game. Ended up going two for four with a couple of runs scored. So has been here to this ballpark and has played on its surface even though this is a new one. Courtesy of you too. Brendan Ryan chops a little two hopper to Ibar and just like that there are two outs. Well you can see out there from Mike Trout a lot of movement, moving the hat, chewing the gum quickly. Obviously, you know, you've got an edge going because you're up here at the major league level. Yes, you played in the Futures games here. You played minor league games. But this is the show up at the big league level. Obviously, you'd love to be able to get a fly ball, routine fly ball to get yourself in, in the flow of the game. But, of course, when you come to the plate, have that nice fastball middle part of the plate and do some damage. Dustin Ackley takes a strike. Ackley in his rookie campaign recently called up, went one for four yesterday, hitting 298 with three home runs and eight runs batted in. Fouls this pitch off to the left, and it's quickly no balls and two strikes. Also a good sign, too. Two ground ball outs for Irvin here, the first two outs of the game. 
Always about tempo and rhythm for Urban. Ackley also a, a former first round pick in that same draft class of Mike Trout in 2009. He was the second overall pick out of the University of North Carolina. Kyle Seeger, the Mariners' third baseman, the third round pick of that draft, also from UNC. One two pitch rolled foul. The count remains with a ball and two strikes. It's always exciting when a player with that type of ability gets called up to your ball club. And even as a veteran player later in my career, anytime there was a, a prospect you hear a lot about coming up to the big league level, it just gives you that excitement. You feel young again when you're on the field. I mean, Torrey Hunter was all smiles today during batting practice, seeing this youngster up here. Fastball got him looking on the outside corner. Down goes Ackley. It's a one, two, three inning. For Urban Santana, Ivar Hunter and Abreu to face Blake Bevan when we return. Seven and 42 at the start of the day. Eric Ibar leads things off at shortstop. Torrey Hunter is in right field. Bobby Abreu is the DH. Vernon Wells, the cleanup hitter in left field. Howie Kendrick at second base. Alberto Cayasco gets a start at third base tonight. Spicer Sturis gets the night off. Mark Trumbo's at first. Hank Conger will bat eighth and do the catching and making his major league debut. Mike Trout batting ninth and playing center field. Taking on the 22 year old from Irving, Texas. Big, tall drink of water, Blake Bevan. Yeah, he's got a good fastball, 90 to 93 pounds of strike zone with that fastball would sink. The curveball changeup, who exceptionally well his first time out. Seven innings, only one run allowed. Bevan, 6'7", 240 pounder. Delivers inside for ball one. The guy that last year combined between the Rangers organization and the Mariners organization went 14 and 8 with a 3.90 ERA, a former first round pick at Texas. This one is ripped into right field. Ichiro giving chase, and that one is gone. Big fly for Eric Ivor to lead things off, puts the Angels on top one and nothing. What oh, super quick hands. Eric Ibar on that fastball. Reports are that Bevan does a lot of fastballs early in the game. He jumped on that one. Good fastball, but even better swing from Eric Ibar's. Interesting. Okay, is that how you do it? <laughs> Sixth home run of the season for Ibar. Picks up his 38th run batted in. Came off a two for four game with a double and hold for the dance. That is all the rage nowadays. As Torrey Hunter takes his strike. There it is. <laughs> Or he's got to learn to step out there and let them finish the dance before the pitch is made. Miguel Olivo appeared to have been crossed up on that pitch. Looked like he was anticipating a breaking ball. That's why he went out there and met Bevan uh, midway between home plate and the mound. It was still called a strike and it's 0-1. Torrey went two for four last night himself. But he 244, nine home runs, 40 runs batted in. There's the slider that... Oliva wanted the previous pitch. If we go back and take a look at that eyeball home run, you can see how quick 
Eric's hands are that fastball was supposed to be on the outside part of the plate, but super quick in, tucks his hands in, and turns on that fastball at 90 miles an hour, hits it out to right field for a home run. Home run number six for Eric Ibar. Two balls and a strike on Tory Hunter. A slider missing down and away. And it's three balls and one strike. Bevin making his major league debut on July the 3rd against the Padres. Picked up the W. His story swings through the fastball. And it is a full count for 90 pitches in that major league debut. Struck out four, walked two. It was the 17th overall pick by Texas in 2007. 3 2 pitch. Tori shoots one out toward right. Ichiro is there. And there is the first down. Let's take a look at the defense for Seattle this evening. Hallman is in left. Gutierrez in center. Ichiro is in right. Seeger, Ryan, Ashley, Smoke from third to first base. And Miguel Olivo behind the plate. Boy, just a smoke. He's there for the swing and the power for Seattle. But he's a guy who's been very good as far as the glove at first base. Some good range and very quick as far as catching the low throws. But it, it, at times, when he makes that throw to second base, that's where he's had his most problems throwing that ball away. There's Bobby Abreu. With one out, nobody on. The Angels leading at one to nothing. Fastball is up and away. Bobby went one for three and an RBI last night. His 1,300th career run batted in. He's eighth among active players in the RBI category. Getting 286 on the season, three home runs and 35 driven home. As that pitches down and in. And it is two balls and no strikes. Oh. Two and one. Good crowd expected tonight. Fireworks after the game. Pretty close, if not already sold out for tomorrow night. Game three. Great pitching matchup on Sunday afternoon at 12:35. King Felix Hernandez against Dan Harris. Two-one pitches. Call the strike. And it's two and two. Hernandez and tickets available for that Sunday game too. Yeah. What a matchup that is. 12:35 is that start time. You see the uh, the note there. Big trade with the Texas Rangers last year. And with Justin Smoke along with. Josh Luke and Matt Lawson. Bobby slices one down the left field line. Hallman giving chase. He'll track it down. For the second down of the inning. The Mariners send in Cliff Lee and Martin Lowe. July 9th of last season for Texas. And a trade that I guess you could say so far has, has paid dividends for both sides. Obviously, Cliff Lee, a huge part of the Rangers' run last year, getting all the way to the World Series. Justin Smoke, the future first baseman. Well, the present day first baseman, but terrific upside for him. He was a former first round pick at the University of South Carolina. And in Bevan, they think they got a, a mid to back into the rotation guy. As Vernon takes a fastball for a strike. They feel he's got a chance of being a 12 to 15 game winner consistently at the major league level. He throws a lot of strikes and go deep into a ball game. Vernon lays off the breaking pitch. Even to count at one ball, one strike. He went 0 for 3 last night with a sacrifice fly. And the Mariners, obviously, with their th that rebuilding mode that they are currently in. A lot of young players already this season. Seventh Mariner. Blake Bevan is a seventh Mariner to make his debut this season, along with Michael Pineda, Tom Williamson, Josh Luke, Carlos Baguero, Mike Wilson, and Dustin Ackley. That pitch misses inside. It's two balls and one strike. Went there for a while, though. They didn't have a, a ton of prospects in the minor league level, especially at the upper levels of the minor leagues. A lot of their prospects were down there in A-ball, double-A. Now they're getting an opportunity to play. This one pulled toward the hole, backhanded by Brendan Ryan. The jump throw is not in time, and that is an infield single for Vernon Wells. Nice job by Ryan going deep to his right, and even being in a position to make a play on Vernon. Pretty accurate throw, too. And Vernon stole that foot, bothering him going down the line, but he said he told me today, so he'll feel better. Thursday or Friday next week. I mean, it's those four days off of the All-Star break. That's some kind of play by Ryan. Burnham's able to beat that out. Get an infield hit. Second hit of the inning. Ibar had the other one. A leadoff home run for him. His sixth of the season. Howie Kendrick.
takes up an end for ball one. Howie last night extended his inning streak to 16 games. Tying his career best. Set it back in 2006. Being 307, eight home runs, 29 runs batted in for the All-Star. Lines this one, one hopper pass, Brendan Ryan. And that's the third hit of the inning for the Angels and a new career high. As far as his streak is concerned for Howie, his 17th consecutive game with a hit, Vernon Wells. So he's trying to stretch it out. Thing with Howie, you, know, you saw that rocket he hit the right center field last night. This one he turns on that fastball. This time, Evan leads that fastball up, and Howie's so quick with the hands once again hits that ball by and the Ryan for a base hit into the outfield. The ability to hit the ball to right center and left center makes it so difficult to pitch against Howie Kendrick, the All Star Howie Kendrick. Alberto Cayaspo takes up and away a off speed pitch from Bevan. Alberto yesterday came into the game with Borges was hurt. Pinch ran. No at bats for him last night. A sinking fastball just missed off the plate. And it's two balls and no strikes. Alberto hitting 275 with three home runs, 31 runs batted in. Let's get a nice level swing on this fastball right here for Kayaspo. Fouls this one off the left, pulling off of it. And it's two and one. Kayaspo had been scuffling coming into this homestand. He had been in a, a two for 33 skid. He's eight for 27 on the homestand. And getting the opportunity back from the left side of the play where he started okay. He's at 304 against left-handed pitching from the right side. 2-1. Breaking pitch drops in there. 2-2. Two two. Angels last night, 3 for 7 with men in scoring position. They've got Vernon Wells at second base with two outs here in the first. Howie Kendrick is at first base. Bevin a glance back at the 2-2, and this one bounced right back to the big right-hander. Ricochets toward the line, and they still get Alberto, and that will end the inning. But the Angels strike first as Eric Ibar picks up his third career leadoff home run down the right field line. One of the most Angels made it one another. Angel Baseball is brought to you by 76 Gasoline. We're on the driver's side. Top of the second here at the Big A. The Angels with a 1-0 lead, courtesy of Eric Ibar's sixth home run of the season. Urban Santana here, the second to face of Levo Smoke and Jack Cust. 
Texas. Ketchup on the hot dog? Absolutely. It's one way to roll. The other is with barbecue sauce. I figured that hot dog was a little bit too much for the young man. He's like, yeah, I'm going to watch the game. I'm going to see a fly ball to center field. See how Mike Trout can run that one down. I believe the catcher takes a breaking pitch upstairs, and it is ball one called by the veteran Sam Holbrook calling the balls and strikes tonight. Todd Titchener over at first base, Jerry Davis at second, Greg Gibson is over at third. As Olivo bounces this with the Ibar, who's been uh, busy already tonight. That is the third ground ball that he has received. And there's the first down of the inning. And you know what? Last night we were talking about the, the crew carrying over from the Tiger series. The, the Angel Hernandez, Joe Wesker, although Joe wasn't here last night. Just as we expected, we figured that it would be just one more game to get us to Friday and kind of get a new crew in here. Pretty good crew, this four umpires. Mm -hmm. Pretty consistent. Three ground ball outs and a strikeout for Urban Santana to start as Justin Smoke takes one downstairs. Smoke got the uh, quasi night off last night, serving as the DH. Went over four. 238, 12 home runs, 42 runs batted in. As Urban misses high, and it's two balls and no strikes. Smoke was in the cleanup spot last night, dropping to the five hole this evening. And it's three balls and no strikes. Seattle out on the road. Three games under 500 at 20 and 23. They are 11 and 11 within the division. Here's a strike. The Angels are 10 and 11. Hey, does Urban Santana always seem to pitch on flashback Fridays? Yes. I think, I think when uh, spring training first started, I think he got dibs. I think so. Yeah. The rotation just seems to work out that way. 3-1 and Smoke lifts one out toward left center field. This one tailing back towards Vernon Wells. He'll call off the youngster. Murder makes the catch out number two. Fans follow the Angels at FoxSportsWest.com slash Angels. Log on and catch Matt Money Smith's column on Vernon Wells. Perfect timing. And be sure to vote for the Angels poll question. Who has been the best American League starting pitcher this season? Josh Beckett, CC Sabathia, Jared Weaver, or Justin Verlander. I hate to contradict our, uh, our colleague Jose Moda, who yesterday during the pregame show on Angels Live said that he would pick CC Sabathia to start the All-Star game. Uh, Jerry Weaver. Not even close between the first two guys in Weaver and Verlander. Yeah, you can make an argument with Weaver and Verlander, but those two right there are the best. Weaver, Verlander, and got an excellent pretty good too, yep. Dan Heron. Yep. Two shutouts this season, a one-hitter and a two-hitter. Pretty good numbers. Two balls and no strikes. Jared, the American League leader earned run average at 1.86 as Cuss takes upstairs and it's 3 0. Weaver's followed by Beckett, Verlander, Gio Gonzalez, who blew up tonight against the Texas Rangers, gave up or only went four innings. As Cuss pulls that pitch foul, it's 3 and 1. James Shields had a great season. The rookie, Michael Pineda, whom the Angels will face tomorrow night here at 6.05 start. He's at 2.58, then Dan Harris. Some great numbers put up by pitchers this year, especially when you look at, at the American League, generally known as a hitter's league. Full count now. Yeah, seldom. I mean, you got the top 10 in the American League and earned an average below three. Alexi Ogando is 10th at 2.92. And that's only because he had a he had a stretch a couple starts where he kind of blew up a little bit with the Texas Rangers. 3-2, a swing and a miss by Cuss. Down he goes. Second strikeout for Urban Santana. We head to the bottom of the second. Mike Trout is he getting his first major league plate appearance with the Angels on top one nothing.
score of one to nothing. Eric Ibar lead off home run at the bottom of the first inning. That poor piece of gum that Mike I Travis know, and he was crushing that <laughs> thing. That was beautiful in that one fly ball. You see Torrey said, hey, listen, you're the center fielder. Go get that ball. Don't let Vernon take that fly ball away from you. <laughs> oh, man. Here's Mark Trumbo. Bottom third of the order for the Halos here in the second. Trumbo, Conger, Trout. Talk about uh, the youth of tomorrow for the Angels. Mark Trumbo, last night, 0 for 3, was hit by a pitch, hitting 253. 14 home runs, 37 driven home. Fouls this one back, and it's one ball, one strike. The Halos with eight guys on this roster right now, 25 years of age or younger. So eight of the 25. That's pretty good. This one pulled to third, and Seeger has it for out number one. Tyler Chadwood would be on that list, but he was optioned down to Triple-A Salt Lake to make room for Mike Trout. And some folks should probably wonder, oh, why Tyler is he not going to be in the rotation? Is he? Are they going to limit his innings? The fact of the matter is, is that he's not scheduled to pitch this weekend whatsoever. And then you've got a four-day All-Star break before the Angels kick things off next Friday in Oakland, a series in which he's not going to be pitching in anyway. So he gets sent down, gets a chance to work down at AAA. He'll get to start next Thursday at Salt Lake, which would put him in line to make the first start for the Angels to turn home to start a three-game series against the Texas That's Rangers. That's the absolute perfect decision to make by the Angels. When you think about it, Tyler Chadwell gets an opportunity to stay fresh. If you're not going to pitch, it's difficult. Even though they want to stretch him out, give him some time off in between some starts here and there to try to limit the innings for the season, but you want to keep him fresh as much as possible. And, and he wasn't going to be, and he's got an off day in between that Oakland series right. in Texas, so you it get pushed back again. Mike Sosh is going to put the top four guys out in that first series against Oakland in that four-game series. Tyler, the number five starter, would be pushed back, so why not get him down there, keep him fresh? And you could basically, it's, a, it's essentially a modified bullpen that, that AAA start next Thursday. You could limit the pitch counts to whatever you want. You could say, hey, we're going to cap it at 75, just kind of limit things, get your work in, work on the things that Mike Butcher wants you to work on. As Conger, it's a one-hopper to second. And that is out number two here in the second. Batting ninth, number 27, center fielder Mike Trout. Trout steps in with two outs and nobody on base and takes a fastball outside. One ball, no strikes. And all of a sudden, the game will slow down for him. And he gets to see that first pitch. Didn't jump out at that pitch. Now he can see the ball better, trying to talk, talk to himself and staying back. So difficult when you make your debut here. Foul tips that one. It's one ball, one strike. Trout at double-A Arkansas. Played in 75 games, 324. 32 extra base hits, an on-base percentage of 415. And 28 stolen bases. Flips this one foul. And it's one ball, two strikes. A line of cards drawn out there today. Met with the media at 3.30. Well, he hasn't stopped smiling yet. Here at the plate, trying to talk to himself. Lays off the fastball. Olivo asking for the... Uh, the some help at first base. Sam Holbrook says, I got it. It's two balls, two strikes. Breaking pitch. Fouled off to the right. Bevan got away with one. A little hanging breaking pitch. The count remains at two and two. Trout at 19 years of age. Youngest in Major League Baseball right now. The 25th overall pick in 2009. Flips this one out to shallow right. Each row comes charging in. And it's a 1 2 3 inning for Blake Bevitt. Two of the books here at the Big A, and the Angels maintain a 1 0 lead.
the third. Well, now he got that first A-B out of the way. You kind of breathe. Yeah, bit. exactly. I mean, it's just the game comes so quickly, too, and you're not able to relax. Now you can see him take a deep breath out there in the outfield, cover some ground, and get ready for his next at bat as he's trying to talk himself through, trying to tell himself to relax. That baseball comes by you pretty quickly. Irvin Santana has faced six so far. He's retired all six, including a couple of strikeouts, facing the bottom third of the Mariners order, Gutierrez, Seeger, and Hallman. Franklin had a couple of hits last night, going two for three. Takes a fastball up and in. Mariners center fielder hitting 190 on the year with a home run, eight runs batted in. He's got three doubles. This is just over 40 games to start this season. Starting the year on the disabled list. Pulls this one over Kayaspo. Ibar's got it, and that's going to go as an infield base hit. Kayaspo playing in to guard against the bunt potential. That ball really bounded off that hard dirt in front of the plate, and there's nothing Kayaspo could do. Well, in your position to try to take away the bunt, the proper position for Kayaspo once that ball gets overhead, no chance. You know, you can see the range of Eric Ibar to be able to get to that baseball. Here's got a, another base hit. He had a couple of flares last night. So man on, first base runner for Seattle. Here's Kyle Seeger, the, the third baseman. Made his major league debut last night, went over four. Takes a fastball inside. Seeger, a North Carolina native. Double A Jackson hit 312. Four home runs and 37 runs batted in. Gutierrez with the. A little bit of a short lead at first base, but Irvin will check in on him. Four stolen bases this year for Gutierrez. But the one thing about Irvin, though, he's has to pay attention to the stolen base threat. He's allowed 17 stolen bases in 18 attempts so far this year. And Congress throwing out seven of 50 would be base dealers. This one out toward left center field. Vernon Wells, Mike Trout, Mike Trout. No, Vernon Wells makes the catch, spins around, fires at the second base. Gutierrez tags and is in there safely. There's one out in a man in scoring position for Greg Hallman. Corey Hunter again to tell him, hey. It's your baseball, you're letting Vernon take everything away from you. And that ball's tracking back towards Vernon Wells, the left hand bat. <laughs> Tori will make sure Mike Trout is relaxed at some point during this game. Tori was talking a lot with Mike Trout during stretching, during BP. They were in the same group together. Breaking pitch is in for a strike on Hallman, the left fielder. Hitting 286 with a home run, three runs batted in. Gutierrez with a pretty good lead at second base. This one, a little flare out the shallow center field. Trout's coming on, not going to get it. It falls in there for a hit. Hallman is on board. The Mariners have runners at first and third. Caught up with Torrey Hunter before the game and talking about Mike Trout getting ready for well, his first Major League debut or Major League debut tonight. This is what Mike Trout had to say about Torrey's comments. Torrey told me, you got to accept failure. That's a big, big reason you can move up in this organization, you know. You can't get down on yourself on one A-B, you know, 20 A-Bs. It doesn't matter. It's a long season. And, uh, you're going to go through some some bad times, and uh, the, the quicker you can recover from that, the better you're going to be. Well, that's so true. It's such a tough grind baseball season. You think about the all-time great hitters, 300 batting average. That's failure, 7 out of 10 at bats. So you have to, the, the players that get to the major league level and stay there for a long time and are successful are the guys that could put a bad at bat behind him quickly or a play in the field. That's how you become successful. 
Ichiro trying to flare one into left field, fouls it off instead, and it's no balls, two strikes. Ichiro for one with the ground ball to short. Tough guy to double up. It's Gutierrez who had to freeze between second and third to make sure that Trout didn't catch that baseball. Advanced only 90 feet. Hallman is over at first base. O2 pitch. He's got a piece of it. Great pitch. Good location down and in. And that's now the Mando pitch too. to get Ichiro out now. The, the breaking ball, the slower breaking ball down in the dirt. He pulls off on that pitch. Ichiro doesn't hit many double plays. Hitting the four this season, so that's something that doesn't happen too often. So right now, Urban Santana looking to see if he can get the swing and miss. Halos with a run in the first inning, courtesy of the Ibar home run off Blake Bevin. Zichiro fouls this one off. The count remains at 0 2. Seattle threatening here. It's a six men to the plate, and all six retired by Santana. Prior to this third inning, Gutierrez had an infield base hit. Seeger with a fly ball to left. And advanced Gutierrez to second base. And now Hallman with a base hit to center, putting runners at the corners and a very dangerous hitter at the plate. Brendan Ryan, the shortstop, is the man on deck. Outfield very shallow against each hero. Hallman takes off the pitches down in the dirt. It's a stolen base for Hallman. And a one-two count on Suzuki. Hallman assuming that Irvin's going to throw that breaking ball in that spot. Had a good jump. Was able to advance easily in the second for a stolen base. His fourth stolen base of the season. And it's difficult to get each row to hit him with double play anyhow. So you're still in a position where you try to pop him up in the infield or get a swing and miss if you can. So two in scoring position now. And here's the one two upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Two pitch just missing off the plate. It's a full count. Well, that's a pretty good spot. And he ran off the outside corner, but certainly a pretty good pitch for Urban. Conger setting up that target the outside corner. Maybe just off the outside part of the plate. 3 2 pitch. Breaking pitch pulled over to first base. Trumbo's got it. He'll race to the bag as the run scores. This game is tied up, but there are two outs now. Suzuki picking up his 23rd run batted in, and Hallman advances to third. And nice job by Trumbo there. A lot of times the first baseman freezes and waits for the pitcher to cover the bag, but Urban was late covering the bag. Trumbo had the presence of mind to go there and beat Ichiro going to the base. Now, Mark's been one of those guys this season. The more and more he plays first base, the default for him is, I'll take it. If I've got to give it up and the pitcher's actually there, then I'll give it up. But other than that, he's more times than not going to be taking it himself. Take a lot of stress out of that play. A lot of time to feed over there. If the pitcher's going to be late or a low throw, take it yourself. Brendan Ryan swinging on that first pitch slider. And it's no balls in his strike. Ryan grounded out to Eric Ibar in the first inning. So he's 0 for 1 so far tonight. A two for four game last night with a double, his 12th, and RBI, his 25th. He's got Greg Hallman over at third. Looked like he went around. He did. Sam Holbrook doesn't even ask for help. No balls, two strikes. O2. Foul back. Oh, he climbed the ladder nicely on that fastball. Ryan just getting a piece of it. Keeps his at-bat alive. The Cal remains at 0-2. Well, you have him set up now for that nasty slider down and away. You know, you make the hitter aware of that fastball up. 
Check swing. He went around. Holbrook rings him up. That will end the inning with the Mariners tie the game on a couple of hits as we head to the bottom of the third in a 1-1 tie. A cold, hard, blast, lean off the ball game. Eric Ivar gets a fastball, turns on it at 90 miles an hour, and hits it out the right field. His sixth home run of the season, which is a career high. Vernon Wells and Eric Ivar celebrate that career high in home runs. And of course, like cold, hard, blast. He'll lead off this bottom of the third inning. The game tied at one apiece. Seattle getting a run on a couple of hits in the third. To knock this game up. New career high for Eric Ibar as far as home runs are concerned. His third career leadoff home run. Trying to draw the infield in. Seeger, the third baseman, playing at the cut of the grass now. And Ibar with a one ball, no strike count. Devin coming off a one, two, three second. Off speed pitch down low. And it is two balls and no strikes. Duo. Ibar fouls it off to the left. It's two balls and one strike. Bevin down at AAA Tacoma. 16 starts this year. 5-3 and in a 4.45 ERA. Struck out 64. Walked 20 in 93 innings. Yeah, it's going to rely on movement, location. Not going to necessarily overpower you. This one flipped out to left field. Hallman comes in. And will make the catch for the first out. Hey, join the Angels and Wells Fargo as they host the annual canned food drive at Angel Stadium through Sunday. All fans that donate receive an Angels team photo. Fans that donate 10 canned goods or $10 or more receive two tickets to future game while supplies last. All proceeds benefit the Second Harvest Food Bank of Orange County. One out, nobody on for Torrey Hunter. Lined out to each row in right field in his first inning at bat. Takes a breaking pitch outside. A game in Texas, a final now. The Rangers have defeated the Oakland Athletics for the second consecutive night, 8-4. to C.J. Wilson picking up the win in that game. Torrey takes a strike as Bevin paints the corner. One ball, one strike. So the Angels needing a victory to remain a game back. Oakland drops to, I believe it's 10 games now. The division, 2-1. And one thing you notice that at Bevin so far, I mean, the hitters will notice this, and guys in the bench will look, look for it, too, to see if a pitcher's going to tip what type of pitcher throwing. A lot of movement in the glove when he goes to a breaking ball. Not as much when it's the fastball. Torrey chopping this one to short. Brendan Ryan has it. Two outs. Oakland with the loss does drop to 10 games back in the American League West. It might accelerate the uh, 
the quote unquote selling process of some of their potential free agents. And a lot of talk goes about amongst general managers at that All Star break and at the game itself. Well, Oakland, I think, is going to end up being a pretty good seller here pretty soon. Non potential waiver. free agents. Trade deadline coming up. Here's Bobby Abreu looking at a fastball for a strike. Bobby had a fly ball to left field in the first inning, so he's 0 for 1. Hits this one out to left field again. Hallman going back on it. They track it down. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Bevan, who's now retired seven consecutive Angels. And see how he can hit. Base hit. Nil through three. We're down at one. Time now for our AT&T trivia question. Since 1973, which three American League starters finished the regular season with an ERA under two? Is Blade of Blue one of those guys? Your guess is as good as mine. I take under five. That'd be all right for me. I was five in 1973. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There you go. Three, Other time. four, five for Seattle here. We start the fourth inning. Dustin Ackley, Miguel Olivo, Justin Smoke. Ackley struck out looking in the first inning. She's 0 for 1. And Urban, beginning in the third inning, starting to fall behind a lot of hitters. Two balls, no strikes. This one lined to left field, a leadoff base hit. But the had the leadoff infield base that eventually came around to score in the third. But the first two innings, very aggressive, throwing strikes, good life on his fastball, but hasn't been able to get back to that command of the fastball here the last inning plus. Yeah, fastball upstairs. Actually, very good fastball hitter. Well, he doesn't have a lot of time in the major league level. He's shown throughout his collegiate career and, of course, in the minor leagues, he can hit a fastball and hit it consistently. Miguel Olivo takes the breaking pitch upstairs. And again, Urban just kind of getting underneath that breaking pitch. We talked about it a couple of times this season. It, it gets in between that slider and curveball. And it just becomes a, a spinner up there and stays up. Two balls and no strikes. Olivo a ground down victim leading off the second inning. So 0 for 1. And it'll come back to him, too. I mean, just a perfect example is the Brendan Ryan hit bat to end the third inning. A couple of nasty sliders. Leave a line to the alley in left center field. Trout will not be able to get it. Plays it on a hop. And Ackley ends up at third base. 
The base hit by Miguel Olivo, and again on a 2-0 count, the fourth of the night for Urban Santana, and he's in some trouble here with runners at the corners. Justin Smoke coming up. Well, you make pretty good hitters, very good hitters, when they get themselves in good hitters' counts. And back-to-back 2-0 fastballs, and has elevated both those pitches, both the Ackley and the Olivo, up in the strike zone, able to see it well, hit that ball hard, and then in the alley, a fastball that Urban just tried to get over the middle part of the plate. Justin Smoke steps in. Get a fly ball to left field in his second and a gap back. Smoke, a guy that you can't induce a double play on, especially with a Levo at first base. Lays off that pitch. One ball, no strikes. And the mindset for Urban Santana has to be limit the damage. If you do score a run, so be it. Try to get the double play ball. The offense is going to score some runs tonight against the youngster Bevins, so you have to have that mindset. Limit the damage. Don't let the Mariners have a big inning against me. 2-0. and oh. Make that 5 2 oh counts. Actually with a leadoff base hit. Stands at third. Oliva followed that up with his own single. Four hits already for Seattle. All four are coming in the last two innings. Irvin always with that uh, kind of that cool demeanor about him. A little bit of a smile, a nod. As he was talking to Hank Iger. Coming off a win against the Dodgers on the third. That was that Sunday night game here at the Big A. Allowed a run on six hits and seven and two thirds. Break the pitches in there, two and one. That win, by the way, for Irvin snapped a six start winless streak. Previous victory was here at the Big A, May the 25th against Oakland. 2 1. Outside, three balls in a strike. Jack Cust is the man on deck. Smoke fouls it back. It's a full count now. Now we're down to the press box area. So yeah. I believe it would be going here a 3 2 count. Yeah. Try to stay out of a double play ball. Not a very big lead for him as Trevor plays in front of him. It doesn't go, and Smoke hits one out toward deep center field. Playable for Trout. That'll score Ackley. Olivo's tagging from first, heading to second base. And he's in there safely. And the Mariners have a two-to-one lead. Smoke picks up his 43rd run batted in. Well, Smoke got a pitch that he could hit in the air and just missed hitting that ball out. Trout was able to track it down. A spinning breaking ball. Got underneath that. It stayed right over the heart of the plate. Fortunately. Where the Angels, that ball stayed in the ballpark. You don't get that baseball back often when you have a spinning breaking ball like that. Olivo at second. Jack cuts at the plate. Seattle on top. A breaking pitch outside. One ball, no strikes. Cuss struck out swinging to end the second inning. One of three punch outs for Urban. Go with no walks. The four hits allowed. 2 0. Oh. Common theme tonight. Of late, specifically. 54 pitches thrown by Santana. 31 strikes, 23 balls. See a label leading off at second base. Two and one. Spence, you getting caught in between the curveball and the slider again. Changing speeds on the slider. That was a dangerous pitch. He just got away with there. 2-0. Cust hooks this one foul down the right field line. So it's two balls, two strikes. The Mariners designated hitter. Two-two. 
Missing inside, full count. It's four full counts for Urban already in the game here in the fourth inning. Payoff pitch out toward right. A lot of top spin on it. Satori so will make the catch. Olivo's not going anywhere. Torrey kind of a in front of ball into the infield. It's throwing anybody out in a while. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to air it out. Get loose just yeah. in case he needs it. Throw somebody out of the plate. He's not happy that it kind of sailed up the line a little bit. Mike Butcher's going to come out and talk things over here with Santana. Pretty good throw, though. He got underneath that throw. You can see that as he tried to get himself in position to make that strong throw, loosen up his arm. And I like this visit, too, by the way, from Mike Butcher, who had to talk to Urban Santana. This refresh him. The fact is the importance of throwing that first pitch for a strike. Falling behind consistently. These Mariner hitters get a lot of good swings this last two innings against them. So with Olivo still at second base, Mariners on top two to one. Franklin Gutierrez stepped to the plate. One for one had that chopper over Kayaspo's head that Ivar got to, but had no play. Goes as an infield single. He scored the Mariners' first run in that third inning. Breaking pitch still got underneath that one. It's called a strike, though. Well, you can see the frustration on the face of Irvin on that pitch. The six of the 16 batters face tonight so far for Irvin first pitch strike. There's a good slider and it's 0 and 2. Well, the key for a pitcher to, 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 to rely so much on the slider is that front shoulder needs to stay in there very long. If you fly open quickly, that's when your wrist ends up dropping and you had that. Kind of a flat slider, but if you keep that front shoulder in long enough, you have a chance of getting over top of that and snapping that slider like that. Called strike three on the outside corner. Urban at least limits the damage. Seattle takes the lead with a run and a couple of hits. We head to the bottom of the fourth. M's lead at two to one. AT&T. Buy your Southern California Ford dealer. Visit us today and trade up to four. And buy Jack in the Box. For a limited time, Jack's really big chicken sandwich combo is back for only $3.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. Halo's down by the score of 2-1. to one. The sun sets here in Southern California. Near the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Wells, Kendrick, and Kiasco to face Blake Bevin, who's retired the last seven in a row. Gave up three hits in the first inning. The Angels took a 1-0 lead on Eric Ivar's home run, but that's been it for Bevin. No strikeouts, no walks, the three hits allowed. Vernon had one of those hits, an infield base hit. So he's one for one and now backs out. Yeah. 
Bevin delivers a shot. This is foul back off the mess. No balls, two strikes. Bevin was in spring training with Seattle, not roster invite. Pitching three games, had one start in Cactus League play, went one and known a 6.43 ERA. Then off to Tacoma to make those 16 starts, and now in the big leagues. Second major league start for him at 22 years of age. Marriage have another 22 year old tomorrow, Michael Pineda. Playing the start for them. Breaking pitch, hook down the line. This one's got the distance. Is it fair? Goal! Big fly for Vernon Wells. We're tied at two. Boy, much easier on the foot for Vernon Wells, but he could jog around the bases. It's a breaking pitch. 0-2 breaking pitch. He hits that with a ballpark. Boy, super quick on that one also. Spinner up there, get it underneath it. Boy, a break of pitch, and this, and that type of pitch there, you want better bite on it. He's able to drop the head of the bat, look at inner half, it turns and drives that out. Now he fouls this one off. That's all you can hope for as a hitter when it's a breaking ball count. Hope that it spins in the middle part or middle in, and so you can have that dance once again. Both of them home runs tonight. Home run number 13. For Vernon Wells. 33rd run batted in as Bevin backs out. That snaps that string of seven straight retired. This one toward the hole. Brendan Ryan is there. That ball came up on him. Throw out Howie Kendrick for the first down. Again, getting back to you're hoping for a spinning break ball in the inner half. Down and away, it's going to be very difficult to make contact. Quick with his hands through that baseball, down and in, hits it out. It's funny, he was kind of smiling at Trumbo. Says, "You know what? I'm only one behind you now." That's right. As far as home runs, you better get started to swing it, Trumbo, because I'm going to get you. Here's Alberto Caspo with one out, nobody on, and a two-two tie. Alberto hit it sharply back up the middle, went off the body of Blake Bevin. He threw him out to end that first inning. 0 for 1, getting the start at third base tonight. Count even at one ball, one strike. The line the same for both teams. Two runs, four hits, no errors. Both teams have stranded two base runners. That pitch outside. And it's two balls and one strike. Now, kind of like we've talked about, Urban Santana getting underneath that breaking pitch with the slider and having it sail on it. Think of said about Bevin and his off speed pitches. Alberto fouls it off. It seems like he gets the tendency of dropping the elbow a little bit. And that's why you get more movement. You can't control it. It usually tails away out of the strike zone against the left handed batter. And even from our angle here, and I certainly you can see it down in the dugout if you're the angle, he slows down his delivery when he's throwing an off speed pitch, which gives you a better chance, even if you're full, to you keep your hands back long enough to make good contact. Okay, Aspo. Lifts it foul and out of play. The count remains at two balls, two strikes. Real quick through his delivery with his fastball. When he goes to an all-speed pitch, slows down his arm action to take the speed off of the pitch. You can't do that. you got to trust your grip, whether it's the changeup or the breaking ball, and have that same arm action as your fastball. Hitters time that well. Still at two and two. And usually when you see a guy like like Blake Bevin, 22 years of age, 6'7". You're thinking of a power guy because he was that type of power pitcher in high school. And that's what got him to be a, a first-round pick of the Texas Rangers. This one's pulled to the right side, past the diving best in Ackley, and it's a one-out base hit for Alberto Payas. Able to track a breaking pitch once again and hit that ball through the hole. Pitch before, fastball, smooth, quick delivery, good arm action. This time trying to slow it down to make sure you have better break on it. And a hitter can see that ball out of his hand and have a better opportunity to track it. But there you see the breaking ball, slowing it down. And then, of course, the arm angle a little bit different, too. You can see Kayaspo is able to keep his head back. Even if you're fooled on the speed, you keep your hands back long enough through the strike zone to hit that ball hard.
So chaos put first one out two two tie here in the fourth. Here's Mark Trumbo. Lined out to Kyle Seeger the third baseman in his second inning at bat. Fouls off the first pitch. See Mark shaking his head. He had a pitch to drive right there. He's looking fastball and got the fastball. And Evans around the strike zone hasn't walked anybody yet in this game as it struck anybody out either. So he's around the strike zone with his fastball, his breaking pitch. At times pretty solid, but at other times floating over the middle of the plate. Kind of has a, a little Josh Beckett look to him, doesn't he? Just a, from a physical standpoint. No question. Another native Texan. A one pitch. Trouble swinging at the breaking pitch. It's no balls, two strikes. Trying to climb the ladder. And sometimes when you're a sinker ball pitcher, a guy that doesn't overpower hitters, that's a difficult thing to do to go up the ladder and change arm angle. He dropped his elbow to force that fastball up. Better off at times just going east to west on that instead of trying to go upstairs if you don't have that in your arsenal as far as a four seam fastball. One two on its way. Let me jam him with the fastball. See, that's the better pitch for him to run the fastball inside. Chaos with a pretty decent lead at first base. The one two. And the down up swing with a fastball. Down goes Trumbo. First strike out of the night. For Blake Bevin. Let's take a look at our ATT trivia question once again. Since 73, which three American League striders finished the regular season with an ERA under two? Ron Guidry in 78. Roger Clemens in 90. And Pedro Martinez in 2000. Don't play the blue. I might have been 71. Then. Don't play the. Yeah. He's the MVP of the league too. Hank Conger takes a strike on the inside corner. Hank grounded out to Dustin Ackley in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. Seesaw game so far. Tied at two here in the fourth inning. The Angels both their runs on home runs. As this one's rolled over to Ackley once again. It'll end the bottom of the fourth inning, but Vernon Wells with a leadoff home run in the fourth, the 13th of the season, ties this game up through four. We're knotted up at two.
Urban Santana to face eight, nine, and one for Seattle. Seeger, Hallman, and Suzuki. Seattle with solo runs in the third and fourth innings. The Angels, both of their runs coming via the home run. Ibar in the first, his sixth. Wells in the fourth, his 13th. Kyle Seeger hit a fly ball to left field in the third inning, so he's 0 for 1 for that first major league hit. An unusual thing that Irvin has done so far here. He's thrown four innings. He has four strikeouts, and all four have ended an inning. So he's finished well. Two looking, two swinging. Ackley in the first, Cust in the second, Ryan in the third, and Gutierrez in the fourth. So one pitch. Down low, one ball, one strike. And that fourth inning really could have turned out to be a, a big inning for Seattle. They had runners at the corners with nobody out. Sack fly by Smoke. The fly to right by Cust and the punch out of Gutierrez. 1-1 one, one out to center field. Mike Trout going back on it. They're down number one. And that's the thing for Urban. Just trust your ability to have hits in the strike zone when they're hit. And an outfield, they don't catch anything that's going to stay in play. And a very good infield as far as fielding ground balls. So you got to trust your defense. Challenge hitters, get ahead of the count. No, if you get ahead of them, 0-1, 1-2, you could make them hit your pitch instead of be forced into a fastball count, and they could square the baseball much better. Greg Hallman takes a breaking pitch. It just missed inside. A little bit better by Irvin. It's one ball, no strikes. Hallman had a base hit, a stolen base in the third inning. So it's one for one. Fouls this one off to the right. Hallman got to the big leagues at back-to-back three-hit games. June the 5th and 6th. Pretty good debut. It's pretty good numbers. Gives you some time to have a couple over games after that. Hundred at bats. That's what you're looking for as a hitter. From a number standpoint, one one pitch is swinging a miss. One and two. That the number until you get to 100 at bats always fluctuates very, very much overnight. Two hit night, three hit night. Then you get to 100 ABs, and it seems like it takes a little while to either go up or go down. This one hooked down a left field line. A mistake by Irvin Santana, and Hallman has this one off the wall. It's going to go as a double. And it comes with one out here in the fifth inning, his second double of the season. Almost a similar pitch that Bevin threw to Vernon Wells, who hit that ball out this time. Holman gets a break and pitch, in her half, drops ahead of the bat. Fortunately enough for Irvin Santana, stays in the yard. Well, after that nasty slider he threw the pitch before, got underneath this one and spins back over the middle of the plate. It was a very hittable pitch because the speed and the break just stayed in the yard. So Holman in scoring position for Ichiro with one out. Showing Bunt drops a beauty on the third base side. Infield base hit. So each row one for three. Runners at the corners for Seattle and Brendan Ryan coming to the plate. I guess each row looking for hits as opposed to a run batted in. I mean, there's a guy, the guys in scoring position, right? And you're the best hitter with guys in scoring position on the team. And, that, and that's that's exactly the point we're trying to make. You've got a team that is the worst hitting team in the American League, a 224 average, and Ichiro takes his own knock as opposed to driving in the run that would drive him in. And put Seattle back on top. Well, Chris Chambliss is the hitting coach. I mean, he's a guy that did a lot of damage as far as driving in runs. That's got to drive him nuts. He's keeping a good poker face going there, but the reality is you're the best hitter on the team as far as hits in guys in scoring position and you put down a button and force the guys behind you to do the job. Brendan Ryan is 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. Hooks this one out to left field. Vernon comes charging in. Hallman is tagging. The throw from Vernon is up the line. It's cut off at Seattle. Takes a 3-2 lead. 
sack fly for Brendan Ryan. 26th run batted in. The seesaw continues. And one of those breaking balls that spun over the middle of the plate once again. And Ryan is a guy that if you get him hitting a ground ball, he will hit into a double play. Would hit into six double plays so far this year, but the breaking ball up in the zone allowed him to get that ball in the air. Get a great view on our Fox Mo how when you get underneath your slider, you can see the whole wrist action and the ball that spins over the middle part of the plate instead of that little dot on the, on the rotation of the seams of the baseballs when you get on top and snap that slider. Irvin falls behind again at one ball, no strikes. Ackley, a one for two night, had a base at the left field leading off the fourth inning, came around to score the Mariners' second run. Ichiro takes off. Ackley takes a strike to throw down from Hank. Not in time. And Suzuki has picked up his 23rd stolen base. Decent jump, but not a great jump. But Irvin fairly slow to the plate and a breaking pitch. Number did a nice job of making sure that ball didn't get into center field and Ichiro able to go to third base. Ackley fouls it back. Puts the ball in two strikes on the second base. Pickoff attempt, Ichiro back in there. Seattle with three consecutive innings. Solo runs. And this one really just uh, on that mistake pitch with two strikes on Holman with one out. As he doubled off the top of the wall in the corner in left field. Check swing foul. Hallman advancing to third base on the bunt single by each run and scoring on the sack fly by Brendan Ryan. One ball, two strikes here on Ackley. We play here in the fifth, a 3 2 Seattle lead. This one rolled over to Trumbo's got it to the backhand. He'll feed Santana. That'll end the inning. But damage done as the run comes in, and Seattle is back on top. As we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, Mariners lead it 3 2. Setting up nine one and two Mike Trout Eric Ibar and Torrey Hunter against Blake Bevan Mike Trout 0 for 1 hit a fly ball to right field in his first major league plate appearance that came in the second
Nevin's first pitch is in for a strike. Looked like Trout was taking the whole way. There's no balls in the strike. Mike from Millville, New Jersey. That's in South New Jersey. Swing at that breaking pitch. It's no balls, two strikes. Got the crowds to play. It's only when a hitter's going to do that, he had that quick hand through that fastball inside. 0-2. Oh, Ground ball to short. Ryan has it. There's down number one. He does get down the line pretty quick. Yes, he does. <laughs> See, Janet with the fastball it goes inside on him. It looks like a running back going down the line. Got to get run over a linebacker. So one out. Here's the top of the order, and Eric Ibar. One for two. Home run of the first inning. A fly to left in the third. One ball, no strikes. Devin's just now thrown his 70th pitch of the night. 47 strikes, 23 balls. There's one strike yet. That was a Mark Trumbo in the fourth. No walks. The five hits allowed. How would you classify them? Short armor? Yeah, oh, there's no question. You can see even on the fastball. We're going to show you something shortly on the difference between his delivery with the fastballs compared to an all speed pitch. He does have a tendency to do some things different on those two pitches. Fastball, short arms it, doesn't necessarily follow through, recoils. The all speed pitch out in front a little bit more and kind of guides it through to the catcher. Two one pitch upstairs is the off speed pitch. Three and one. This guy didn't even that pitch through. Ibar pops it up. The get will leave him. With the call, gives way to Kyle Seeger, the third baseman. And there's down number two. And one of the most affordable ways to see the Halos play is with the Jet Blue Friends and Family Pack. This deal includes four tickets, four hot dogs, and four sodas for only $44. The next Friends and Family Pack game is Sunday against the Mariners at 1235. To purchase your tickets, visit the Angel Stadium ticket office or log on to angels.com slash funpack. The Mariner game on Sunday at 1235, a pitcher's duel. Felix Hernandez against Dan Hare, last game before the All-Star break. And Heron just got his 100th career victory the other day. In grand fashion, a shutout. It happened too often. Two pitchers getting their 100th career victory in the same season. Pinheiro got it earlier. Dan Heron. 2 0 has popped up. Seeger, the third baseman. Makes a catch. Another 1 2 3 inning for Blake Bevin. We have played five here at the Big A. Seattle still leads it 3 to 2.
all about Mike Trout today. His press conference at 3.30 out, stretching, taking some batting practice. Boy, you can hit the ball well during batting practice. So is Victor back there checking it out also and just taking it all in. Batting number nine, running out there, he makes a plays in the field. They called off in the outfield by some gold lovers, but it all around an opportunity to be able to see the future here in Mike Trout. That was our Coors Light Free Scan. Brought to you by Frost Brew for his life. I Victor, take, how do you do it? I, I had taken a couple of pictures of Trout's first couple of swings, and I thought I'd share it with, uh, well, essentially with the world via Twitter. I don't blame you. At least in my, my neck of the woods. It was a good swing. Yes. It's a pretty good picture. He hit some rockets in batting practice. Yeah. He's got his scouts like to uh, describe sound. Now you can always tell a, a real good hitter the sound of the baseball off the bat. Another one of those sliders for Urban. Underneath it, you see a spinning pitch. Comes a very hittable pitch. Miguel Olivo with a one ball, one strike count. He's one for two at a base hit in the fourth. This one grounded a short. Ibar has it. Went away. I mean, you were, a, you were a sinker slider guy. And there's games where you just don't have it. I mean, you may feel good in the bullpen. You come out to the, to the big field, and all of a sudden, it's just not there for you. You've got to make some sort of adjustment one way or another. I know that there are times where you kind of beat your head up against the wall saying, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, I'm going to keep trying to throw it. But at some point, when, you, when it's not coming around, you almost got to go to plan B. Yeah, and that's the fastball. I mean, Urban has a great fastball. You can change speeds on, on a fastball. You can pitch inside and outside with your fastball. You can do so many different things. We talked about Dan Heron and, and Jerry Weaver throwing the BP fastball. You can sink the fastball, too. If your slider's not working, yeah, that's your, your swing and miss pitch. But the fastball can get you so many easy outs if you locate it well, in particular if you can throw it for a first pitch for a strike. At first fastball, the smoke was good. That one just missed off the plate. It evens a count on the Mariners first baseman. Hit a fly ball to left field in the second. And a deep fly in the fourth. Pick up a, a run batted in. It's 43rd of the season. One and two. And it's amazing how many times a hitter will get themselves out with a, with a, a decent fastball. Because they're, they're, they want to hit a fastball. If you locate it on the outer part of the plate and you can show it early in the game, you can throw it for a strike. You can start going a little bit further off the plate, and they'll get themselves out. Fastball just missed in off, and it's two balls, two strikes. You get guys on those games that uh, perhaps you don't have your best slider sitting on that slider, hoping for that cement mixer. Up yeah, because you're gonna if you if you don't have a good feel for it, you're gonna make a mistake with that pitch. And if you ever see highlights of home runs hit out of the ballpark, majority are hanging breaking pitches. That was a pretty good slider right there, and it's a full count. Not getting the call from Sam Holbrook. This is when he stayed on top. Great late break to it. Surprised Smoke didn't swing at that pitch. Yep. That was nasty. 3 2. This one grounded to the right side. Howie Kendrick in the outfield grass. Two outs. Fans on Tuesday, July 19th, the Halos take on the Rangers at 7.05, and original owner Gene Autry will be inducted into the Angels Hall of Fame. All fans in attendance will receive an Angels Hall of Fame shirt courtesy of Smile Generation. To purchase your tickets today, visit the Angel Stadium ticket office or just log on to angels.com. Nice looking shirt. Yeah. Two outs, nobody on for Jack Cuss, the DH. Takes a breaking ball for his strike. Get back to your point, Victor. A lot of times a pitcher, especially has a great breaking ball, they get that mindset, I get to force that in you. I have to have that pitch. But that fastball, if you can throw a fastball right there at 92, you get a modest. And you go sink the fastball away, you've really opened up the plate as far as, as pitching and getting easy outs. Now, if you stay in a particular point of the plate, then the hitter's going to hit it. Two balls and one strike. Urban retiring the first two batters in an inning for the first time since the second. Seattle with six total hits, two each in the third, fourth, and fifth innings. Two balls, two strikes.
Got him swinging on a 2-2 breaking ball, and Irvin has his third 1-2-3 inning in his first since the second. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning, but the Angels down by a run. Gardens Casino. Get your game on by El Pollo Loco. Now for only $5 at El Pollo Loco, get one of our five tasty combos. They are the combos. Other combos wish they could be. Catch them before they are gone. And by Time Warner Cable. Manners on top 3-2. Bottom of the sixth inning. Bobby Abreu to lead things off against Blake Bevin. Coming off a 1-2-3 fifth. Halo's ending up three, four, and five here in the sixth inning. That's one ball, no strikes. Bobby 0 for 2, twice having hit a fly ball to left field. Halo's with five hits in this game, two of which left the building. One runs by Ibar and Wells. One and one. Burton Wells on deck. Howie Kendrick to follow. Howie extended his personal best hitting streak. 17 games with a first inning base hit. One ball, two strikes. Take a little off-speed pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Bevin just making his second major league start. Has one strikeout with no walks. Five hits allowed. Delivers a 2-2. Bobby fouls it off. Nice one-handed catch in the front row of the upper deck. That is straight up tracking it. And Bobby was late on that fastball also. He's going to change up here. Bobby rolls over this one. Smoke plays it to the backhand and will feed Bevin for the first out. And we've gone from 16 to the final two greatest moments in MLB All-Star Game history. Go to MLB.com slash moments and vote now for your favorite Midsummer Classic moment. And tune in to the 2011 MLB All-Star Game Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific here on Fox to find out who won. One out, nobody on for Vernon Wells. It's two for two. Base hit in the first inning. A home run leading off the fourth. The home run is 13th. The RBI is 33rd. Takes a fastball for a strike. You would think he was going to try to stay away. That fastball ran on in the inner half, and we're going to let that one go. But you would think Bevin's going to stay away on everything. Uh -huh. 
No balls, two strikes. Ground ball to short. Brendan Ryan has the ball jump off on him and Blair will reach. Ball at the last minute just kind of came up on him. The Angels get a man on for Howie Kendrick. When he's in position, just rolled up and hit the heel with his glove and up on his body. Tried to recover, still a strong arm, but ends up getting an error. Sometimes the most routine plays end up being the most difficult one. Home run, no, I mean, error number eight for Ryan. Howie one for two with that base hit I just mentioned in the first inning. Burnett takes off the hit and run is on. This one bounced foul. Well, he had a huge yeah, jump. They look at the straight steal. He look back, see if contact was going to be made. No balls, two strikes. Bevin, kind of a, an unusual stretch position. As he comes set, his left foot is really out in front towards third base, kind of a closed stance, if you will. And he peeks back towards first base, at least the last time, over his right shoulder. He definitely closes it up. This time he didn't do it. Now he fouls it off to the right. He's still his, his foot is over in front of his, his back leg, and he's able to the spin across that's what he's trying to do as far as a slide step to be quicker to the plate Type of uh, stance in, in the stretch position, you, you do lock yourself up. A more difficult throw to first base. You're not going to be as quick. To be quick as far as your slide step, because you all you need is a quick hip turn. And you're going to be going good towards home. A little bouncer to second base. Ackley feeds Ryan for one. The relay to first in time in the ending double play. Six of the books here at the Big A, and Seattle maintains their three-two lead.
run. Irvin Santana to face the bottom third of the order for the M's. Gutierrez, Seeger, and Hallman coming off a 1-2-3 sixth inning. He's retired the last five in a row. Gutierrez, a base hit and a run score to the third inning as a leadoff man. And struck out looking to end the fourth inning. Five strikeouts for Irvin. No walks. Six hits allowed. And again, the, the, the streak that Irvin's been on, the strikeout to end the inning, continues. Had one to, to end the sixth inning. Jack Cuss going down, swinging on a breaking pitch. And Irvin here to lead off this inning. Falls behind at two balls and no strikes. He's thrown 91 pitches so far. 56 have been strikes. Two and one. This one out to left field. Vernon moving to his left will make the catch for the first down. Hey, subscribe to MLB.tv to see every Angels game live or on, to, on demand. Part on your computer, as your favorite devices. MLB.tv Premium lets you enjoy HD quality, home and away coverage, multi-game view, as well as the ability to pause and rewind live game. Visit Angels.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv Baseball Everywhere. That's about the fourth or fifth time in a 2-1 count. Urban is throwing a slider, and Gutierrez was all over that pitch. Hitters look for patterns and pitchers. Seeger takes inside. He's over for 2 with the fly ball to left and the fly ball to center. Three and up. Can't fall behind in this his first two batters here in the inning. 2-0 before going 2-1 to get me out. Now 3-0. Here to Seeger. And he walked him. First walk of the ball game. Comes with one out here, the seventh. And you'll face Greg Hallman, the left fielder, who's two for two against him with a single and a double as well as a run scored. And Mike Butcher's going to come out as the Angels start to get action going in their pennant. It looks like Hisanori Takahashi is playing catch. It looks like Rich Thompson as well has joined him. So a right hander and a left hander for Mike Sosha. That's the first walk of the game. Bevin has Issued any base on balls, having struck out in one. No question, Mike, what you went out to tell him, Santana, trust that fastball. See if you can work that down in the strike zone. You got a lot of ground balls early in the ball game, particularly to Eric Ibar. See if you get one right now. Six and a third so far. Five punch outs and a walk. Late on that fastball, but no balls in a shot. Hallman down at the minor leagues. The fourth game this season, he fractured his left hand. He missed from April the 11th of May the 28th. Played nine games at AAA. Great number down at AA last season. That pitch missed in shot. One ball, one strike. 33 home runs. 80 runs batted in. Last year for this young man from the Netherlands. 
some pretty big numbers. Just got a piece of that one. And it's one ball, two strikes. The Mariners have action themselves. Jamie Wright, the veteran, is up and loose. Bevin's thrown 90 pitches. Well, Wright looks like he's getting ready in the hurry, though. Mm -hmm. He is going to be coming into the game. The runner goes. The one-two swing and a miss. Conger with a couple of double outs. It looks like interference at the plate. Should be out of the inning. Yeah, that's a double play. Interference. That is the third out. So seventh inning stretch time here at the Big A, and the Angels trail it by the score three to two. an angel and was a fixture in the middle of the lineup but what he did with the bat was nothing compared to what he did with the glove phenomenal player i mean you know obviously the catch i mean i was right there front and center i had the best view of anybody the thing i remember most is the look on timmy's face when i rolled over he was kind of running at me and he was just had the biggest smile on his face things like that i remember more than the actual play itself Bottom of the seventh inning, Seattle on top by the score of three to two. Blake Bevin is back out there. Alberto Chaos will lead things off, followed by Mark Trumbo, then Hank Conger at the inning. Gets extended. Mark, Mike Trout will get an opportunity. 0 for 2 in his major league debut so far with a fly ball to right, the ground ball to short. Alberto had a base hit his last time up. He's one for two. Bevin delivers a strike. Three runs, six hits, an error. Three left on for Seattle. Two runs, five hits, no errors. Three left on for the Angels. It's inside. It looked like a Levo again. Got crossed up. That's going to appeal. He did not go. Yeah, he's definitely going out. There was the way he went after that baseball. It was definitely a cross-up. How are you getting crossed up with nobody on base? The second time that I'm And hey, there's sometimes the catcher is the one that made the box. Yes. Yes, I won't name some of the catches of, over the years I threw to, but I remember a couple times he goes, hey, you threw down the wrong pitch. I said, listen, I know exactly what you put down. You got crossed. He goes, all right, but everyone thinks it's you, so I'm all right now. Two balls and one strike. Let's see. You uh, came up with Kansas City. No, we don't know nobody. <laughs> I forget them all. Let's run through this, I remember shall we? every home run I gave up, but I don't remember <laughs> my catchers. 2-1. Alberto pulls a foul. I don't recall. I could get pretty close, I think. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. <laughs> this one out to shadow left. Hallman is there. One out. 
miss the adjustments the hitters try to make as far as picking up whether it's an off-speed pitch you see on the left or a fastball he's doing something different he slows down his delivery and doesn't get the full extension over the back over here is compared to straight up on the back he's tipping exactly what is the off-speed pitch and the fastball enables hitters to react better on the fastballs compared to the off-speed pitches seemed like there's a little bit more of a recoil on the fastball than he does with the, the back straighter up speed. gives it you know the square shoulders look for the hitter Mark Trombo going after that first pitch slider no ball to the strike Trombo for two line out to third and strike out we show the Halo's hero with Jim Edmonds Jim Edmonds used to sit in the dugout all day long and say this is what the pitch is throwing right now he's so good and there's always a coach or even a, a bench player that picks up that stuff. And the little things that a pitcher may do differently between a breaking ball and a fastball could be the difference between winning a game or losing a game. One one on its way. Breaking pitch lined over the head of Brendan Ryan in the left field. And Trumbo has his first hit of the game. And it comes with one out here in the seventh. All speed pitch full, but still kept his hands through the baseball. And gets a base hit in the left field. So man on for the Angels here in the seventh. Hank Tiger steps to the plate. And it looks like it may have been Blake Bevin's last pitch. Eric Wedge, the skipper's coming out. Jamie Wright was loosening. Sure enough, Bevin is done on the night. One strikeout, no walks, two runs allowed, and leaves. Property over at first base. The veteran rights coming on. But the Mariners on top 3-2. And buy Sit and Sleep. Save up to 50% with Sit and Sleep Independent Sale. Sit and Sleep will be anyone's advertised price or your mattress is free. <laughs> How much is the mattress? What? Uh, it's, uh, it's free. It's free. Yeah. I'll just play it straight from now on. All How's right. that? Perfect. That all right? Jamie Wright, the veteran, comes into the ballgame. 3 2 Seattle here, the seventh with. One out and a man on. Wright pitching in his 35th game. He's had a nice season for Seattle out of the pen. Two and two record of 3.09 ERA. Jim Wright still good fastball with good movement on that fastball. 89 to 94 curveball slider changeup. Hey, you got a throat lozenge? Because it is free? Yeah. Hank Conger at the plate. 0 for 2. Twice having grounded out to Dustin Ackley, the second baseman. Perhaps cognizant of Trumbo maybe taking off at some point here. Check swing and he got a piece of it and fouls it off and it snowballs in a strike. Right at times can be deliberate delivering the baseball to home. A lot of moving parts for the big right hander. It was a decent move. He has one pickoff this year. Three stolen bases allowed. Nobody's been caught yet.
One ball, one strike. Scott Downs and Hisanori Takahashi. Couple of left-handers up. Quick for the first. If Trumbo gets back in there. You see that quick move he has. And when he's going to the plate, slow, but very quick to first base. Mike Trout on deck. Trouble with a one out base hit here at the bottom of the seventh. Trouble, eight stolen bases this year. He's been popped three times. He takes off. Hank takes down low. The throw is in time. Yellow Weaver guns it down. Throw to the two. Weaver with a strong by the arm. Catcher, yeah. Yeah. Quick transfer. Looked like Trumbo stumbled initially as he tried to steal the base there. Had that foot close to getting in there before the tag was applied by Ryan. A real good view there. Definitely got the right call. Tag was applied before the foot got in. Conger hammers one down the right field line. Goal! Big fly for Hank Conger. We're tied in three. A majestic foul by Hank Conger, the right field. His fifth home run. Fourth allowed by Jamie Wright this season. Try to sneak a fastball inside part, a cut fastball. Turns on it and hits it well out. Mike Trout takes a fastball down low. Three solo home runs for the Angels tonight. Ibar, Wells, and now Conger. Trout 0 for 2, a fly to right and a ground ball to short. This one out towards center field. Gutierrez is there. They make the catch in that one and the inning. But the Angels tie things up with their third home run of the night. Through seven, we're not at a three. Together, but tonight it's about the big fly. Eric Ibar 
starts it off, leading off the ball game. Hits one out, his sixth home run of the season. Vernon Wells turns on a breaking pitch in the inner half. Hits his 13th home run, and Hank Hunger ties the ball game up with his fifth home run of the year. A big, majestic home run. Three home runs for the Halos tonight. High ball game here in the top of the eighth. New pitcher on the mound for the Halos. Scott Downs, the left-hander, takes over for Urban Santana. Urban tonight, seven innings, six strikeouts, a walk, three runs all earned on six hits. Urban's ERA does not budge, stays at 3.89. Scott pitching in his 34th game, a 5-2 record, a 157 ERA. Facing the top of the order here for the Seattle Mariners, Ichiro, Ryan, and Ackley. First pitch is a breaking ball. They caught the outside corner, Joe, and one. Downs hadn't pitched since Monday when one inning struck out two. It was against the Tigers, the 5 1 victory for the Angels. Each row tonight, one for three. He chops this from the Trumbo, one out. Had a punt single and a stolen base in the fifth inning. And an RBI on the ground out in the third. So he got one for four. Brings up the shortstop, Brendan Ryan. Ryan's got 0 for 2 tonight. The ground out a strikeout. Had a sack fly in the fifth inning. That snapped a 2 2 tie, putting Seattle up 3 2. If it's 26th run batted in. Takes a fastball low. Blake Bevan, by the way, a young starter for Seattle in his second big league start. Went six and a third tonight, one strikeout, six hits, included two home runs, two solo shots, so he got charged for two runs, both earned. This one back up the middle, Downs knocks it down, picks it up, throws the first, and he throws wildly, and that allows Ryan to reach. Field base hit for Brennan Ryan. Well, he had the glove down and trying to make that quick throw trumbo. Tried to apply the tag. Good effort, but Ryan clearly beat that one out. Downs looked like he slipped. His back foot slipped as he picked up the baseball. And that's why the throw kind of sailed up the line on him. If it does it, I think it throws on the back and they get a chance to hit Ryan. But as it goes, it's an infield base hit. The man on with one out here in the eighth. A real good job as far as fielding position. A number of times coming into the game, getting ground balls back at him. Watch that back foot as he plants. And this turns the ankle. Real good view right here of the ankle turning. That's, bit, that's the big foot for him, too, because that's the push off foot on the pitching rubber to generate that. Push in the lower part of your body to get a good arm action on the fastball and breaking ball. Dustin Ackley at the plate. He takes down and in. Ackley a one for three night. Had a base hit and a run score. Leading off the fourth inning. Kayas was off the line but just about even with the bang at third. One and one. The Angels in the bottom of the eighth inning. At the top of their order coming up. Ibar, Hunter, and Abreu. One and two. Look like that where he tried to cheat a little bit on that inside fastball. Swinging over the top of it. It's David Pollock against the play catch in the pen. Scott Downs is very good as far as getting that fastball inside the left-handed batters. Ah! 
tap it found the count remains and ball and two strikes. Well, it seems like he set up for a sweeping breaking ball off the outside corner after back to back fastballs inside. Breaking pitch, just a little bit high, fooled Ackley. It's two balls, two strikes. Pretty good pitch. Unless it's high, yep. which is not. It's in the strike zone. Well, he set him up, set fastball, fastball in, and breaking pitch. Got him swinging. Foul tip and hung on to by Conger, two outs. I'll tell you what I like from Dustin Eckler. We've seen the living mouth of that bat so far. And even though he commits himself to the to the front side a little bit, those hands stay back, especially when he tries to take whatever he can on the outside part of the plate and takes it the opposite way. That's why you're going to see this kid hitting 300 yeah. every year. If you have that ability to keep your hands back like that, Better chance to punch that ball the other way, especially with some tough pitches on the outside part of the plate. The two outs with a man on at first base for Miguel Olivo. One for three tonight at a base hit. That came in the fourth inning. Olivo swinging first pitch, rolls it foul. And it's no balls and a strike. Brendan Ryan heading back to first base. Urban Santana heads into the All-Star break with a 4-8 and eight record and a 3.89 ERA. After his seven-inning performance. Down able to get one and one. I don't think you look back at this game today and say he made some quality pitches. Yes, he got underneath a few sliders. We were team an opportunity to win the game. That's all you could do as a starting pitcher. Go deep in the game and give your team a chance to win. Oliva chopping this with a short eye bar. Will flip to Kendrick and they force out Ryan. That will end the top of the eighth. We have the bottom of the eighth. In this game, tied up at three. Insurance report card of the night. Nervin Santana, seven innings, six hits, three earned runs. Blake Bennett, six in the third. Two earned runs on six hits, including a couple of home runs. Ibar Wells and Congress with solo home runs. As a matter of fact, just the second time the Angels have hit three home runs in the game at home this year. The other time, June 28th, earlier in this homestand, that was against Washington. Same three guys, Ibar, Wells, and Congress.
Jamie Wright is still out in the game there. He's the guy that gave up the home run to Conger. With two outs in the seventh. He'll face the top of the order. Ibar, Hunter, and Abreu. Eric Ibar, home run of the first inning. A fly to left in the third. A pop-up to Seeger, the third baseman, in the fifth. One. Eric now with a new career high in home runs with six. Three leadoff home runs. Showing Bunt takes a sinker down low. One ball, no strikes. Well, not a bad idea to bring that pitch with you down the first baseline. Plus, with Ackley playing deep at second base, you have an opportunity to get it by right pitcher's mound. You're going to be safe at first base if you can bring that butt with you. This one out for right field. Lutrio comes in and now makes a U turn as he back pedals a couple of steps, makes the catch one out. Fans visit the new Howard's Appliance and Big Street Superstores in Irvine for their grand opening tomorrow. Mike Sochet, Mark Trumbull will be appearing and signing autographs from 10 a.m. till noon. One out, nobody on for Tory Hunter, who's over three. Torrey with a couple of fly ball outs, one ground out. At this point in the game, you're just looking to try to turn on something on the inner half. Ahead of the count at 2-0 oh, with Abreu on deck. Caught the inside corner, two and one. Wait, just the speed of that pitch, fooled. Tory, otherwise that ball is going to be crushed. This is a backup breaking ball, three and one. Jamie Wright delivers a 3-1, and that is down low, and it's a one-out walk. The first walk by Mary Richard. Puts a man on for a great year. The question is, is Eric Wright going to stick with Jamie Wright? It doesn't appear as if he's going to do so. No move as of yet. There it is. Aaron Laffey, the left-hander, has been loosening. He'll be facing Bobby Abreu. we got a pitching change here in the eighth. This game tied at three. Back to television's next big event. You can only catch it during the All-Star Game Tuesday only on Fox. 
Aaron Laffey, the left-handed, comes into the ball game to face Bobby Abreu. Situational appearance for Laffey. Take on the left-hand hitting Abreu. Laffey's done a pretty solid job for him. 18 punch outs and 33 and two-thirds innings pitch. Not overpowering. Fastball 86 to 91 with sink action, slider, changeup. Is there a carnival in town? That thing is huge. Looking for an extra base hit, I think. Life size. Laffey picked up in the trade with the Cleveland Indians on March the 2nd. From Matt Lawson and that guy named Cash. Bobby swinging first pitch, fouls one back. A brave tonight, 0 for 3. A couple of fly balls to left, and the ground ball to first. So the Hunters over to first base. One out here in the end. Bobby at 269 versus left handed pitching this season. Outfield straight around against Bobby. Takes inside to even account. In his career, four for eight. With a strikeout. Down and in. Two balls and one strike. And that's his out pitch. Breaking ball. Two different speeds on the slider. There's a harder slider to get ahead of the count. And then the slower one, more of a break to it. To try to finish off a left-handed batter. But now force maybe into a fastball count. 2-1. Takes a strike on the inside corner. 2-2. Two and two. This is the 27th game for Laffey this season. A 1-1 one one mark and 187 ERA. He does have a save. He's not allowed to run in 20 of his 26 outings leading up to this one. Two-two. Down in the dirt. Full count. Vernon Wells on deck. May just be a one hitter appearance for Laffey. With action going in the Mariners' pen, David Pauly back up and ready to go. Torrey Hunter at first with one out. A full count here on Abreu. 3 2. Outside, that is ball four. So Torrey get a, will take second base. Back-to-back -back walk by Mariner pitching here. Puts two on now. And Vernon will hang out in the on-deck circle to see if Eric Wedge will make a move to the bullpen or if he'll let Laffey face Wells, and it looks like he will. Back in the fourth inning, leading off the frame against Blake Bevan. Hooked a breaking pitch just inside the pull. Picking up his 13th home run of the season. He's had a two for three nine with a single in that home run. He reached down the error by Brendan Ryan in the sixth. It's kind of odd. You have Pauly down and the right hander down in their bullpen. With the lefty up and in the game here against Vernon Wells. No balls in the strike. Coming into the game, 296 versus left-handed pitching versus 179 versus right-handed pitching. Torrey Hunter at second, Bobby Abreu at first. No balls, two strikes. Vernon didn't like that call by Sam Holbrook. And it's 0-2.
Bottom part of the strike zone, outside corner. Very good with runners in scoring positions. Last 12 ball games here. Now got to fight off a tough pitch, 0-2. Pops this one up, first base side. Smoke will run out of room. The count remains with no balls, two strikes. The Angels tonight just hope for one with men in scoring position. Chris Torrey drew the one out walk of Ray, who followed that. And the one out walk of his own. Jamie Wright for Torian. Laughing, putting a Brayu on. Another 0 2. This one lined on left field, a base hit. Torian is going to be stopped at third base. And they are loaded up for Howie Kendrick. Three hit game for Vernon Wells. Decision to either either side to hold him up there. Almost hit hard. Raven Hallman in left field. He charged the ball well. Fastball in her half. Turn on it once again. A mistake. Laffy going inside on Vernon Wells, who's so effective on that pitch. Well, I think that's the right decision by Dino. He's in position. He's looking all the way through to see if there's going to be a bobble in the outfield, but stops him right away. Right decision to make. Eric Wedge is out. Pitching change forthcoming. The Angels have them loaded with one out here in the eighth. That's what I get for looking at the standings right through the commercial break. Well, the Seattle Mariners, David Pauley comes into the ballgame with the bases loaded. And in case you're wondering, uh, Cleveland lost in Detroit yeah. once, and Detroit picked up a game from the Central. Yeah, Cleveland gave up a lot of runs, so there was a lot of pitching changes made in Cleveland. <laughs> Pauley 5-1 one, a 130 ADRA, pitching in his 33rd game. He'll face Howie Kendrick with Torrey Hunter at third base, Bobby Abreu at second and Vernon Wells with a base hit, his third hit of the game. It stands at first. Paulie, a sinker ball specialist. Infield is in. That pitch is in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Fastball, 88 to 92. Curveball, slider, changeup. He works down in that strike zone very well with all his pitches. Howie Kendrick, a one for three game. A base hit back in the first inning. He's standing, he's hitting three to 17 games. 1 0. Pulls this one foul. That one. Elevated, and that's why Howie pulled the trigger on it. One ball, one strike. But that's what you're looking for if you're Howie, something up in the strike zone to get in the air. That ball ran in just enough on him to hit that ball foul. The 1 1. So we're going to miss off speed pitch. 1 and 2. The Angels this season with the bases loaded a 196 average, no home runs. And the 1 2. 
Now he chops this one towards third. The throw comes home. Olivo forces out Torrey Hunter for round number two. Nice play by Kyle Seeger, the third baseman. And it'll be up to Alberto Cayasco. Boy, that's a tough throw, especially with the runner coming down the line. With a good field. Give that ball to the right. Almost pulled his foot off the home plate. Yeah. Still loaded for Kayaspo. Two outs, however. Alberto one for three. Swinging first pitch. Grounds went to short. They flip to second. No, he'll take it himself. And the Angels leave him loaded. Eight in the books. We're still tied at three. Three, the Angels with a golden opportunity at the bottom of the eighth inning with the bases loaded one out. A couple of ground balls ends whatever threat the Angels had put together. Here in the ninth inning, Jordan Walden takes over for Scott Downs. And he is scheduled to face Justin Smoke, Jack Pest, and Franklin Gutierrez. The all-star Jordan Walden. That's right. 39 punch outs this season. Final line for him is that command of that fastball, not overthrowing it. Stay within your mechanics, and then also an opportunity when you get ahead to finish off with that nasty slider. Jordan takes over for Scott Downs, who pitched the eighth inning. Gave a base hit. The infield variety, and then struck out of it. And that was it. All the name of the All-Star team just a couple of days ago. Replacing Mariano Rivera. A couple of Yankees dropping like flies now all of a sudden off the All-Star team. Yeah, notice that Jeter and A-Rod both gone. Replaced on the All-Star team by Kevin Euclid and Johnny Peralta, the Tigers. Adrian Beltre will start the All-Star game for the American League at third base as Drupal Cabrera at shortstop. He had the Cleveland Indians. As Drupal's made some unbelievable plays defensively this year for the Tribe. 1-0 pitches Smoke. Big swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Smoke tonight 0 for 2. Had a sack fly in the fourth and pick up his 43rd. Run batted in. The other two times, a fly ball to left, a ground ball to second. Yeah. One and two. Boy, that's a great play from that 98-mile-an-hour fastball. Back-to-back 98-mile-an-hour fastballs. Got him swinging down goes smoke. One out. And that one at 99 miles an hour. And located perfectly right on the outside corner at the knees. 
He should be feeling fresh. First outing for him since Sunday night. Picked up the save his 19th against the Dodgers. Jack Cuss looks at strike one as the Angels overshift. Three infielders on the right side against Cust, who's 0 for 3 tonight, serving as a DH. A couple of strikeouts in a fly to right. One ball, one strike count. David Paul, it appears, will be coming back out to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Angels have Trumbo, Conger, Trout. Due off in the bottom of the ninth. Off speed pitch, missing low. Two balls and one strike. Walden, the second reliever, third overall pitcher for the Angels. Urban Santana, seven innings, three runs. Striking out six, giving up six hits. Scott Downs, the one inning, and now Jordan. Ground ball toward short, but that's where the third baseman, Alberto Payasco, is making his home on that over shift. And it's a 5 3 put out for round number two. Sunk the fastball away after a change up the pitch before. It's a ground ball out. So two outs, bases clear for Franklin Gutierrez, the center fielder, who's one for three. Base in the run scored. That came back in the third off Irvin. The fastball missing down and away. George Wallen, the first Angels rookie selected to the All-Star Games. It's Jason Dixon, 1997. Two balls and no strikes. Mariner hitters now with the two outs here in the ninth inning against Jordan this season. Two for 16 against him. This one out toward right center field and hit very well. Mike Trout giving chase and at the wall makes the catch. Terrific running catch by Mike Trout, robbing Gutierrez of extra bases. It's the third out here in the ninth. And we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Trumbo, Conger, and that guy, Mike Trout, for this game tied at three. And what a terrific play by Mike Trout to end the top of the inning. Well, that's a great read and a fearless read. Know where you are in the ball game, running back right in front of the wall. Never taking the aisle to baseball, bracing yourself to run into that wall, but that quick step and fearless effort after that fly ball. It's a high five from everybody in that bench. He's due up third here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Mark Trumbull will lead things off. He's one for three. Had a base hit his last time up in the seventh.
Pauly going off speed, missing its shot. It's one ball, no strikes. Pauly got the last two outs of the eighth inning. A crucial situation with the bases loaded, one out. Even to count of one ball, one strike. When you look at Pauly, he does have a good breaking ball, but mainly it's that sinking fastball. And his best pitch, which is his out pitch, is his changeup. He sells that very well. You'd think fastball, but it's that six or seven mile an hour different than the fastball. Like that one. One two count. This one out to straight away center field. It's got a chance. Go! Big fly for Mark Trumbo. Light that baby up as the Angels win it for three. Four solo shots. And that is crushed. This center field, well, we talked about earlier in the ballgame. Vernon Smiles says, Mark, I'm getting close. And Mark Trumbo says, you know what? Not close enough after that gigantic fly. The center field, the walk-off home run for Mark Trumbo. The Halos pick up another victory. Jordan Walden with the win. Jordan Walden picks up his second win. He is now 2-2. Two and two. Full extension for Mark Trumbo as he picks up his 15th home run. And his 38th run batted in. David Pauley, dejected, takes the loss as the Angels have taken the first two against the Seattle Mariners in this four-game series. The final once again. Angels win it by the final of 4-3. to three. For Mark Kubica and our entire crew here at the Big A, I'm Victor Rojas. Thank you for watching Angels Baseball. I invite you to stick around as Angels Live is coming up next.